Talking horses now and the conversation with two OSU equine experts about saddle pads and other tack and ways to ensure a great fit. So this is coach Larry Sanchez and uh, he is the coach of the women's equestrian team. So Larry, we want to talk a little bit. You have a lot of horses that you have to fit for the equestrian team. How do you do that with so many different types of horses that you have here on campus? Well, um, the nature of our program is that the girls will ride different horses every day when they come out. Sure. And then we have an inventory of saddles that have to be pretty universal for the different sizes and, and the different fits that we need to try and manage. And so as I buy a saddle, I try to find one that has enough room through the bars so that it doesn't pinch the horse's shoulders. If you have a little bit of room, you can make some adjustments with the saddle pads to have a more appropriate fit. Um, but that leads me to the saddle pad. One okay. thing that I've found over the years is that the saddle pads are probably even more important than the saddle. Now first you have to get the saddle that has the wide enough bars, but then it's a good quality saddle pad uh, that I've found keeps away from giving any saddle sores or creating any hot spots from pressure points uh, that the saddle could give. Now Hogan here has a very prominent wither, um, you know, and he's, he's not slender through his shoulders, but he's a little more slender than, you know, some of our reining horses tend to be a little bit more broad across the shoulder. And so when I get a saddle pad, again, I, I buy off the shelf. I don't custom order any saddle pads. Uh, I try not to get any that have uh, padding uh, right here where it would meet their shoulders as I would rather them have a little more room than extra pressure points in those parts. So I make sure that the saddle pads are made of good, uh, sturdy quality material. Um, and that when I go to put the pad on, what I wanna always do is put it on a little bit in front of where it's going to rest. And then I like to run it back to where, uh, pushing it backwards because that's the direction of the hair growth. If you put the saddle on, pad on the back and then you try to slide it forward, what I've found happens is it folds that hair forward. Then when you put the saddle on and tighten the girth, that hair is folded forward. And again, that is not the natural direction that that hair wants to grow. And so you can tend to have some problems with that. So I'll always stick the saddle pad on a little forward. It doesn't have to be midway up his neck, but a little bit in front of the wither. And then I slide it back to the proper position where it needs to be. So I know a lot of people look for saddle pads um, that maybe have that extra padding. The way I've always heard about it, well, if your shoes are too tight and you wear extra thick socks to make it better, that's not making it better. Right. <laughs> so, so really looking for a saddle that fits correctly first and then just a good pad, good all around pad is probably more important. And we've had a lot of success. We have uh, many different sizes of horses and, and like Hogan is one of our, our taller horsemanship horses and he has a very prominent weather, like I said earlier. Uh, and, and I haven't had any issues. As you can see, there's no white spots where there's right. been you know, hot points or pressure points over the years. Uh, and I'd like to think that's because of the saddles that we purchased that are wide enough across the bars here, but also good saddle pads. So one of the things that I do is I tell my team that what they're looking for is when they adjust the girth before they even start uh, to wrap the latigo uh, is to make sure that when they pull it across that these two D rings in the center of the girth are just off center of that offside. And the reason why I want it just off center is so when you tighten that girth, it'll move that center of the girth to the center right between the front legs. And as close to the center as you can get it, the better. And so you have to go to the offside and make adjustments sometimes if it's too far uh, on one direction or the other, you either have to take it up or let it down so that uh, the D-rings end up when you tighten that girth as close to center between those front legs as you can. So what I'll do is I, I pulled the cinch strap down here. I'm gonna go ahead and reach underneath. And what I'm looking for is for, like I said, that D-ring to be just that side of center uh, when it's loose before I start to tighten that girth or put it on. And so uh, this cinch is nice enough to where it has a roller right here to where it makes it a little easier to pull because sometimes if the leather's not conditioned, it might be hard for some people to pull. And so what I do is I, I go ahead and run it through. And before I draw it tight on the horse, I go ahead and make a wrap here. Now, I learned that a long time ago from starting two-year-olds that have never been saddled before. And I've seen people, before they wrap it all the way around, put it down through and then they tug on it and it's not really uh, built to where you can't tighten it if the horse 
jumps away from you as a two-year-old. So it's just habit for me to always get that latigo all the way through. And that way, if the horse does jump or whatever, I can pull and draw that girth tight. And that way, if he's jumping around, the saddle doesn't run the risk of, of sliding over. Perfect. Well, thanks, Larry, for sharing some tips with how to fit a wide variety of horses. You're welcome. <laughs>